From all you moonshiners, if you want to hear about the kind of bulls that they serve around here. Welcome back to Barley Hops. Hey, today we're going to do a George Washington rye whiskey recipe. And look, I, what I did was I took it out of this book. This is the uh, Moonshine. I highly recommend it. It's a great book. It's written by a guy named Matthew B. Rowley. Uh, really inexpensive. They're like 14, 15 bucks. Uh, they're, they're full of a lot of great information, a lot of history, and re a real easy read. But he's got a lot of great recipes in here as well. So what I did was I took one of the sheets out. Uh, just all I did was scan it and, and, and copied it out. So I've got it here with me. It's six pounds of flake rye, three and a half pounds of flake maize, which is flake corn, uh, a half a pound of malted barley, a teaspoon of gypsum, teaspoon of acid blend, five gallons of water, then yeast. So uh, we're going to get right at it here. But I got a couple of things I want to show you about how I actually do this. And again, I'll always remind you there are thousands of techniques out there. But when we start making a mash, remember we, we call it cooking, but you're not really cooking, you're, you're steeping because you're trying to convert starches into fermentable sugars. So let's get down to brass tacks here. I went out and I got, this is what I use to make mash in. This is a, a 10 gallon, I got it at Home Depot for like 44 bucks. Uh, it's a cooler. Now, it, you know that when you do your mash, if you're gonna use a flake product, you're either gonna use a grain, which in this case, it calls for a half a pound of malted barley. You can use two row or six row, and we've explained that before about the diastatic power it has. It, that's the, the, uh, the alpha amylase that's already resident inside that grain. And you're gonna use that enzyme to convert the starches from the rye and the corn into fermentable sugars. But it happens at 155 degrees. So I, I, I kind of wondered to myself, I was like, before I used to put it on the stove and I was up and down with the temperature, back and forth, trying to maintain that perfect temperature. And I thought, well, by golly, a cooler does that just as well without adding or removing any heat from it. So what I've done is I've gone out and I've got one of these. Now the five gallon model runs about 21, 22 bucks. Uh, look, a five gallon will work just as well, but I got the 10 gallon in case I want to make a little extra. <laughs> well, but here's what I did was, you know, these all come with the little push button uh, dispensers in the front so you can fill cups. Uh, I just walked over to the shelf, and if you probably got one in your bottling bucket. It's a bottling spigot, and you, interestingly enough, that spigot fits the same hole that this comes out of. All you got to do is screw this one out, screw that one in. My only caution to you, though, is that on the inside, it is a bugger trying to get that washer on the inside because it's kind of recessed. So you got to play with it for a while, put it in, kind of screw the tap in, and then put the nut on the back but it'll work and it's great because all I got to do now is just flip this valve and all my mash will run out into my fermenter and that's what I intend to do all right so I put that away what I did do though uh, I do a lot of shopping at Harbor Freight I got a box of these o-ring because I put an o-ring on the outside because this is just a little bit shorter in length on the stout than the, than the other one so I put a little o-ring in there that keeps it from leaking all right let's get down to it what I've done is I've added about 165, 170 degree water to this already. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to heat it up. Uh, if, if I put my mash and my water and everything in here uh, at 155 degrees, of course, this is gonna be cool and it's gonna cool that down. I don't want that to happen. So I'm preheating. And I put this in there about 20 minutes ago. I can, I can feel it, it's kind of warm, but it should stay that way. And then of course, I've got my new wave pick. Uh, I'm, Heating up the water, I'm at, uh, by golly, I'm at 150 degrees, uh, so I'm going to let that heat for a while, but we'll be back with you shortly. I've got my six pounds of rye. I've got four bags of this, one pound each, and I'm going to use three and a half of those. Uh, I'm going to use a sparging bag, and a sparging bag is just like a mesh, nylon mesh bag. You can use just about any kind of bag as long as liquid's going to flow through it. This one has a really coarse bottom on it, so I'll have that inside my uh, my mash tun. And uh, at the very end, what I'll do is I'll just pick that up and sparge some more water through it to make sure I get all the sugars out, and then I'll run that out into my fermenter. But that's for another time. I, I'll be back shortly, and, and we'll get this thing we'll get going. ready here in just a few minutes. We're going to put all this together. We're going to put it inside our, what I'm going to call now the mash tun, I guess. That's really probably a a good explanation for what it is. Uh, I've dumped the water out of this. Uh, I've got 
or, well, actually, I've, I've still got like a gallon and a half because I, I'm only making four gallons at a time here. So this water's sitting here, and when this gets up to the right temperature, right now I'm at about 160. I want to get to about 165 because these grains, the flakes are going to drop that temperature. Now, you'll notice something just a little bit different on this one than any of the other videos we've done, that in this case, we're not going to use any corn sugar. You see, it's more traditional. Um, and when you use corn sugar, you're really boosting the alcohol, the ABV, alcohol by volume, in this container. Uh, so that when you distill, your quantity, not quality, your quantity is increased. Uh, and when you have just grain and the flake products, and you do this, you're not going to have the 18 to 20 percent ABV. As a matter of fact, at a lot of distilleries too, their goal is somewhere any, anywhere between 8 to 11. Uh, and, and what that is, is they're looking more for flavor, they're looking more for characteristic, and that's what we're going to do here as well. So I won't wind up with the gallon that I would normally have if I made a five gallon batch with 10 to 12 pounds of sugar, uh, because the initial gravity in this is going to be a little bit lower. What I do know though, I do know that all of those fermentable sugars are going to come from the rye and the corn. And we're going to use the grain in order to convert those starches into fermentable sugars. Now, had I not had the grain, of course we could always use you know, alpha amylase. And alpha amylase is available worldwide. So you can also use alpha amylase. So I just want to give you that fair warning, um, kind of like the heads up that this mash is going to have a lower alcohol by volume than a standard mash that I would normally make by spiking it with sugar. Now later on we can make this again, hey, throw three or four pounds of sugar in there and spike the alcohol content. So you're, you're spiking the, the ABV so at the very end after you distill your quantity again, that, that's the volume, the amount that you get out will be increased but you'll still have the same flavors. Yeah, you may reduce that flavor just a little bit, but you will have more quantity, uh, but you'll always, always, if you're doing it right, have great quality. All right, uh, let me get set up here and I'll be Tom's. right with you. We've got our waters ready. We're at about 165 degrees in here because when I add the grains and everything, of course, that temperature is going to drop. I, what I don't want to have happen is I don't want this to get below like 148 or so, uh, and I definitely don't want to be above 165 because uh, this uh, the amylase just it, it tends to give up. Uh, well, I don't want to kill it off and I don't want it to ever get started, so I want to maintain that temperature. And that's why I'm using a cooler. Uh, and we're going to let that set in here for anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. But what we're also going to do is we're going to show you how it works because we're going to test it at the same time. Now, I want to also introduce you to something else too. It's called Convertase AG300. This is like a liquid form of alpha amylase. So it comes in a small brown bottle. You use it the same way you use amylase. Now, it, and I guess it begs the question, George, if you're going to use grain, can you also use amylase? Certainly. Um, look, if it says you need five grams of, uh, of yeast for a batch of, as an example, beer, and you put in seven grams, have you heard anything? No. It's a lot easier or more dangerous to underpitch than it is to overpitch. So yeah, you can throw in amylase too if you want to. It, it, you're not going to hurt anything. It's not going to give you any off flavors or any off taste. So let's get right to it. I'll put this away. Uh, we're going to really probably wind up making a good mess here. Here goes six pounds of flake rye. That's going to go into this bag. And all of this is going to go right inside this cooler. And I've got my spoon. I'm going to mix it up with well, my paddle. I'm going to mix it up with my paddle. And to start with, Let's get this open. Let's get the corn introduced. There's one. There goes the second one. And we, you know, we can edit out some of this. There goes my third bag. And when I get to the fourth bag, we're only going to drop in a half of this. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to follow the recipe. And look, if you want this, just, just let me know. I've got it saved on the computer. I'll shoot it to you. All right. Now, before we add the green, we're going to immerse the bag. 
We'll let that get all soaked up. Oh, you can hear. Oh, that's. This is a fun part. All right, I'm going to get this all mixed up, and I'm going to use the paddle and mix it up. Uh, then we're going to do a real quick. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, with all the grains in here, and you'll notice that my string was a little bit out of reach, so I had to get. Uh, well, what we're going to do now is we're going to test it. We're going to we're going to test it to make sure what we know to be a fact already is that this is full of uh, starch. So I've got my tincture of iodine or iodine tincture. Got a small dropper. I'm just going to get. Just, I, I just need a little. All I need is a drop. I'm going to reach in with a spoon, get some of this mash. And I'm going to do this right here in front of you so you can see what happens. And when I drop a drop of iodine in there, it turns absolutely black. And it'll stay black. No matter what you do to it, it's black. Because the iodine interacts with the starch and turns black. Now, if you shake that and that, whoop, that black color starts to dissipate and disappear, there's no starch there. Or usually, if you just drop it in there, it'll turn a little bit like a, a purplish, bluish, and then it'll, it'll just go away. So that's how you test it. And we're going to test it at the very end after we let the amylase convert all of these starches into fermentable sugars. So let's move back around. We'll dump that. It's now time to add the gypsum. And people ask, what is the gypsum for? The gypsum, and we're going to add a teaspoon. The gypsum really just increases the temporary hardness of the water, which will actually dissipate on its own, and it allows you to extract just a little bit more out of those grain. Uh, when we use it in making beer, we do the same thing, and what it does is it allows us to extract everything we possibly can out of the hops. So what it does is it just raises the temporary hardness of the water, but it'll, it'll go back. Then we're going to add some, according to the recipe, we're going to add some acid, uh, acid blend. And the acid blend is really a blend of three acids, citric, malic, and tartaric. Uh, and the purpose of this, especially in wines, uh, is to replace the acids that are not there any longer and give it that tartness. But in this particular case, these acids are going to raise the acidity level of the mash and that's going to also allow us to extract just a little bit more out of that. All right, we've done that part. Now, my best Virginia accent. All righty then. Uh, it's time to add the grain. So we'll pull the bag out. I've got to untie this bag. And you might ask, you know, why am I using a bag? Uh, is there another way to do this? Well, the, the purpose of the bag is so that I can remove the grain later without having to try to strain it. Because if you've ever tried to strain a flaked product, it, it gets all clogged up, you know. So I, I just do it in a bag. Uh, to me, it's just a lot easier. The other way to do this is to use what we call a false bottom. And, and they're available too. They run 20, 30 bucks. But it's a, a curved screen that it's, it's kind of curved like this, and it goes in the bottom of your cooler or your pot, and it's got a pipe that comes off or a tube that comes off the end of the top of it, and it goes outside your, out your spigot. And what it does is it allows the grain to sit on top of that, and it allow, when you turn the spigot on, it allows all the liquid to flow through the grain without the grain stopping up the spigot and running out. So, yeah, we're going to use one of those too, but I like to do it the easiest way I possibly can because, yeah, if I just showed you all the stuff we've got in the store, you'd go, yeah, but if I had all of that, damn, George, it would be really easy. I understand. It, th th this is just as easy. It's Really, it's a lot of fun because you get to play with a lot of science. You get to play with a lot of stuff that you already have around the house. All right. We're going to add the grain now. And this grain is going to be full of the uh, amylase. It only requires a half a pound. I mean, that's not a lot. Uh, there is a lot of amylase in a half a pound of grain. Uh, we talked about that before. You know, six row has a diastatic power of 160. Uh, two row has a diastatic power of about 140. And all that really means to you is, is that uh, it has enough enzymes in it to convert itself, which 
really is they only it only needs about 30 35 to convert itself well guess what all that extra stuff left over converts anything that's with it so we'll give this a good mix um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie the bag off I'm gonna put the lid on we're gonna let this thing set in in about 60 to 90 minutes or so or whenever I get tired we're gonna come over here we're gonna test it and I'm gonna show you how it's turned into from starches into the fermentable sugars and then last but not least Yep, you know, I'm going to transfer it into my fast ferment. Then I'm going to let it cool down. I'm going to add yeast. And here, probably about a week or so, I'm going to make some more George Washington rye whiskey. We'll be back with you in just a moment. It's time to check. It's been about 90 minutes, so we've let this sit here. And uh, trust me, I've yes, I've stirred it a couple of times. I couldn't help it. You know, open it up and get my paddle, and I just give it a good stir just to keep it mixed up. What we're going to do now, and you can still see there's some steam coming off of that. We're going to get a little bit of this, and we're going to drop in a drop of iodine and see what happens. And if you see that, You'll see that iodine dissipate, and look at that, it disappears. That means that we have converted all of those starches from the rye and the corn into fermentable sugars. The only thing I've got left to do now, and I'm not going to bore you with that, is I'm going to put a hose on the end of that bar, because that's why I put that there. I'm going to set my fast ferment in front of it. I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to let all of that mash run into that fast ferment and leave all that grain behind. And chances are, I'll heat up a little bit more water just to pour back in here to rinse the grain and all the rest of those fermentable sugars until I fill up my fast ferment to the proper height. That's all there is to it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this and give it a shot. Uh, that George Washington Rye recipe is a winner. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.